Hey, I am Jelle, and I don't know if you've noticed it already, but my skin really isn't all that smooth. Sometimes I get the urge to just pop that pimple, but that leaves nasty marks. So I need a way to satisfy my primal urges without the dramatic side effects. Alright, you know what's coming, it's time for a pimple popping pressure party game. The first thing I needed was of course a way to make skin and have pimples show up to squash. I was looking through some of my older projects and I remembered I already made something that would work perfectly. Pure distant function based rendering. I've already made two videos about it where I do crazy stuff with it, like fractals and four dimensional geometry. So check this out if you haven't already. But this time I'll just use the code I already made to create a plane and a sphere. Wow. So why use ray marching again? You see, a huge benefit of using ray marching instead of using normal polygons is the ability to make objects smoothly interact with each other. For example, I can add this ball to the plane and make a smooth transition. Just look at that pimple coming to life. Okay, the plane is now way too flat. No way anyone is going to think this is skin. If you zoom into your own skin, you'll see that you're made out of a whole bunch of little linked skin cells. So I'll need a way to add some texture. Luckily, there are functions that emulate infinite random noise, a basic noise that is used a lot and kind of looks like skin cells, called Voronoi noise. It looks like a bunch of shapes squashed together that bulge up a bit in the middle. Perfect for a skin texture. Okay, I'll just add that to the plane function and ta-da! Much better. Now it has a nice bump, but it still needs a lot more stuff to make it actually look like skin. First up, some highlights that reflect the main light with the parameter to vary the sharpness and make it super shiny, also known as font shading. Next, a subtle but very important feature, subsurface scattering. This effect emulates the translucency of your skin. You can see it for yourself when you shine a light through your hand. The thicker your skin, the less light it will let through. Or it even works in the mark. So what I did is in the ray marcher, when a ray hits the object, instead of stopping, I shoot the ray even further and check how far it travels until it goes back outside. And then I mix the hit point color with the light color. Parts of the shape that are very shallow are much more infected by the light than the deeper parts. So now you get a nice gradient and you see that the edges are much lighter. You know, pimples aren't pimples without some slime coming out. So I made some slime balls and made a script to render cylinders between them. Then I smooth things out and add physics to the balls with some sphere colliders and some spring joints. And ta-da! Sticky slime. Can you imagine all of that coming out of a single pimple? Well, now you can. Now, the pimple has an initial red bump, then a smaller green spot on top as it ripens, and when it gets popped, a gaping hole where the slime comes exploding out. Well, I still need a way to pop the pimples. I made a pair of pimple popping machines where I could control the push force with a simple value. I attached some Raymart's invisible spheres to the ends set to subtract to fake the deformation of the pimples and skin. I mean, can this get even more realistic? Now, why would I make it easily controllable with a single value? Well, pimple popping in a game is fun, but being able to do it for real is way more fun. Arduino time! Check out my other videos to see how I set up an Arduino with Unity. But this time, I was looking for a new way to control the game. I was looking for a way to measure pressure. So I could use something to press and depending on how hard I pressed, it would determine how hard the pimple popper would press the pimple. I tried a bunch of different things. But as I was taking my daily shot of water, I had the perfect thing right in front of me. Syringes. You can put all kinds of stuff in a syringe, but if you put nothing there, it works perfectly as a pressure device. I got these pressure sensors that measure the difference between the atmosphere and this little knob. So if I connect a syringe to the little nibble, I can do stuff when I press the syringe. Like make this little light go on. Now I just need to add a tube and I can press it wherever I want. And then do the thing it's actually designed to do and make the pimple popper move. Of course, no pimple popper is complete without a big splat. I looked around the internet and saw a cool video from Tom Stanton where he built a syringe rocket. I had all these syringes laying around so I might as well use some of them for that as well. However, rather than shooting out the syringe, I wanted to shoot out some slime. So I 3D printed a little contraption that can hold the syringe in place and with the collapse of the vacuum of space, the juice would splat out. So let's test this thingy. Ouch. Well, um, not everything can work from the first try. I think I'll need some reinforcements. Alright, test number two. 
Ready, set, fire! Booyah! Big success! Remember kids, always keep your zip ties and super glue as hand. I made a little hole in the syringe holder, so a servo motor could pull on the little string to rotate the hook. Now, if I send a signal from the game to the Arduino, I can make the servo motor move and shoot out the stuff. Alright, back in the game. Now, I have the basic control setup, so it was time for some more graphic stuff. I made some hairs and rigged them up so they can flow in the wind and sprinkled them all over the place. To make it look even more like a micro environment, I made some particles in the distance and added a dirty screen texture. Now it's like you're looking through a micro camera trying to find the pimple. I lowered the render distance a whole bunch and added some thick fog. So you'll only be able to see what's right in front of you. Also I replaced those stupid demo arms with some proper 3D models. Now to make this into an actual game, well what kind of game can you play with slime balls? Well, what about basketball? Are you able to aim your projectile into the net and safely transport the slime for further examination? Let's see. I created a basketball hoop and set up the scoring system. When you score a slime ball, this arranged rocket slime shooter gets activated. All right, everything in the game is in place. Now let's build the controller. Okay, everything is connected to the Arduino, where the two syringes are used as inputs and the upward syringe is activated by the servo. Now let's give it a nice face and start the operation. Okay, let's see what do we have here. Okay, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, that is a very big pimple. All right. The patient will need two precise injections in the nostrils. Because, um, you know, uh, uh, medical stuff. Let's test these syringes. A little bit to the left. A little bit to the right. Keep, keep, yes, keep pressing. Just a little bit. A little bit more on the left. A little bit, a little bit more on the right. It needs to be that straight. I really need to hit that goal if I want to be employee of the month. Oh, I feel it. We are getting close. Yes, yes, just a little bit more pressure. Wah! 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 Well, the slime is out, and it even hit the goal, yes! That is a win-win, a clean patient, and a nice score. Well, luckily I have a face mask on. Alright, uh, what to, so what to, uh, mm, you know what, mission accomplished. Dr. Jelle signing off. Whew. Another successful surgery. For now, my urges are satisfied, and I can get back to doing some uh, more productive things. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this pimple popping extravaganza. And if you want to feel the satisfaction for yourself, I made a little keyboard version for all of you to play as well. And I'll see you guys next time, where I will survive a whole month on eating only virtual food. Or something else, I don't know what I'll do yet. Bye!